Looking for something to put in your belly that'll make it quit grumbling, but you got that good smoky taste with a coffee and a brown sugar rub? We got something that'll go in your belly, and we got the kitchen smoking in the pit barrel. Pork belly, the cowboy way. Come on. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by another episode of Cowboy Cooking. My name is Kent Rawlings. Woo, we out here in the great outdoors. Our fall cooking school is about to end up, and mm -mm, we have had a good time. A little breezy today is, but I've had a lot of requests from this from y'all, and we're going to break it out. What is it? It is a good coffee brown sugar rub on what? Pork belly. And just like always, anything that we use or anything that you need to know will be right down there in the description below the video in the printable recipe and all. And hey, are you a new subscriber? Well, if you are, be sure and go up there and hit that dingy dong bell and the little subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on none of these upcoming videos in the future. So hey, don't think you can quit me right now. Be sure you stay tuned all the way to the end of this video because we have a very special announcement that we've been working on for maybe like four years. I know you're gonna wanna hear it. Don't leave me, you'll regret it. Now, a lot of y'all sometimes be doubting me when I be looking off out there in the distance, say you there in the third row with the black hat on that's got a beard and some whiskers. Hey, what do you think about this? And I'm gonna show you folks, they're here today. Y'all give a little round of applause here. To start this process, about four hours ago, y'all see me drag out that pork belly, weighing nearly between four and five pounds, and we got as what? Some brown sugar, some coffee, and then we got some smoked paprika, a little bit of garlic. We got us some of that, I don't even remember. It was good stuff though, I seen us put it in there. Coffee, pepper, paprika, kuma, garlic, some what? Ancho chili mesquite seasoning, got it all in there, it does. You ain't got none? Where they at? Who doesn't like a little coffee and hog meat in the morning? Know what I'm talking about? Well, now you can combine them together with that good coffee rub that we got going on here, and you can have it all day long. I got that good pork belly out there, laid it fat side up, take your knife and score just through the fat all the way across, then come back. Then that's gonna let that seasoning sink down in there. Generously rub all over this fat side, get it in between every little crack and crevice, flip him over, do the same thing on that side, and you are ready to go. Now you're gonna have some of that seasoning left, but that is for a good thing, because when we finish up, we're gonna use the rest of it up here later. So we got our pit barrel, y'all seen me put some good hardwood coals out of there, right out of old Bertha, and they are true honest mesquite is what it is. So we're gonna take these hooks, you remember me using them from all the things we've done before, the chicken, the pork butt, the brisket, everything. And I want you to hook them in here pretty deep. And if you can get it through where the fat ain't so hard there, you'll be bunny ahead, it ain't so hard to hook. Come back, try to keep it level, go on the same side. And you can see you have what? A hanging piece of pork. So let me take the lid off. We're gonna slap him in there and let him hang for about an hour and a half to two hours till we can get that internal temperature up to about 165. Then we'll pull him off, we're gonna wrap him in foil, put him back over there on a the grill, let him set for about maybe an hour. Then we're gonna finish it up on Bertha cause Bertha was so excited. She thought she was really gonna to get to meet somebody named Mr. Pitt. She thought it was Brad Pitt. But when we put this in there, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add some hickory to it with that mesquite. I love to mix some hickory and mesquite, especially if I'm putting it on a hog. So it is good flavor, both of them blend together. We're at about 1800 foot here, 1900. It is straight down, just like the pit barrel people tell you, if you're more altitude, raise that thing up. Now, if you're just cooking this on a regular low smoker at the house and you ain't got no way of regulating that temperature with a vent like that, Hey, I'd let you say, hmm, I'd like to be running about 200, 210 degrees along in there somewhere. So I am going to give you one tip. You see old Glory there is facing pretty well to the south. We've got a good north breeze in camp this morning. Now that little vent on the bottom of that pit barrel, always try to find however little or how much breeze there is. I want to turn it around that where it does catch a little air to circulate that smoke. This is a spiral cooking. Remember, it goes round and round, but that smoke will find its way out the top. So if you can keep your little airflow coming to it, you're in better shape. Well, we've been on one hour. You see me take the little probe there and check it. It was about 155. I want to get to at least 160 to 165 on this. We've been one hour and a half. I checked it. 
it is 165.9.37775. But just take them out of there. It doesn't matter at this point, fat side down, fat side up. We're gonna wrap it up really good and tight. Pull the rebar out. Well, we was on another hour we did, and I probed her there. You want to try to get to at least 185 to 195 along in there. Things has got really tender. Can y'all smell that goodness that's coming out there? Whew. See all that good juice that you get to save in here by trapping it in that full? That's making a steam, which is going to make this even more tender. That's why we went that other hour. Now, if you was finishing this right on the pit barrel, you would just turn it fat side down and cook it about 20 minutes on the remaining coals that you have in there. But would y'all want to leave Bertha out? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want Bertha to think she didn't have nothing to do with this video. So, you know that seasoning that we mixed up right there at the first? We got about a cup and a quarter, cup and a half left. Just add you about a half to three-fourths of a cup of brown sugar in there and mix this again because we're going to rub this back on there to give us a little more caramelizing effect over there from Bertha's good flaming licking love that she's got. Go ahead and put some on this top side. Even though the fat side is going to be down, this will sit there from the heat and make you a little caramelization. Because when we take it over here to Bertha, I want Shan to come in here where you can see this fat. Now, you can see that's just a little bit gummy. We're going to sort of caramelize that with a little heat, crisp it up just a tad. It makes for some fine dining. You ever been to one of them Christmases where they pull that ham out of the oven and you smell it like that? This is what it reminds me of, folks. We're going to go fat side down. Hear that sound? That's the sound of I love pork. Ain't no sense in wasting that. Just pour it back on here. Let it get some of that love. It ain't gonna take this no 20 minutes for Bertha to crisp it up. We're probably not far off because you don't wanna burn that fat to where it's just like rendered shoe leather. So we're gonna check it here in just a second. But it's one of them processes where we're not cooking this clean side anymore, just the fat side. All right, so we got it to this point. We was over there long enough that this fat side caramelized and got crispy. You can see it is good and crispy and it's good and hot. So you can tint this for just a minute. I just want it to have a little more steam on it. So we're gonna tint it just to cover it up and keep it at a good certain temperature. Whew, I'll be liking what I'm looking at. You let this cool as long as you think you need to to where you can. Say, Shane, can you hold this? It's sort of like saran wrap in wind. Can, can, you, can you hold it? Thank you, girl. I'm just gonna cut right through. Did you see the way that cut, how tender that was? Mm. We need an ooh and ah from the audience. Ooh. Yeah, that's nice. I need to know about a tail wagon situation here. What do you think? Duke is asleep in the teepee. So I need to know, you always get first bite. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Okay, how many tail wags do I get? You can trim the fat off and leave you some, or you can leave the fat on there, or you can combine the two and just eat it just like it comes. Mm. 
coffee, brown sugar, that mesquite seasoning sort of shines through there, but you get that hickory that just makes hog taste better. This is some of that stuff, folks, you just, you got to share with friends and neighbors. We always be telling you, share the food in the videos, well, it's fitting to happen. Y'all come on up, and we're going to share some food. Well, folks, it's that time. Let's come in and have a bite. Just help yourself, and let's see, does it make your dancing legs move? Know what I mean? So, as James Brown's once said, let's bust a move. Let's see what you got. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. This is good. Duke, was you dancing? More dancing, Tony. <laughs> no, I'm going to have to. I don't dance. You know, this little short end on the back end of that slab where that point sort of comes out, sort of like the end of a brisket flat. Looky there, that is what I call my favorite end to have. Don't you think so, my friend? Yes, sir. Looks really good, and coffee really stands out on that piece. Kind of. I mean, and it's got a good sugary, sort of a caramelized glaze to it, and it, but it's not overpowering with coffee, no, is it? No, it's not. It's perfect. It's a very easy recipe. It can be done without that pit barrel cooker, but why would you do that? Hey, Shan will have you a link to where you can find them things. They are veteran-owned company, and whew, them little things have followed me around. They're easy to tote. I really do like to cook out of them. But remember that special announcement I was telling you about? Me and Shan have worked on it for about four years. Put heart and soul into it. Prayed about it. Asked God to help us through it. It has been a struggle at times, but we listened to you folks on YouTube. We did. We seen what y'all were after, and that was faith. Y'all are family-based, and you love to eat. That's a feast. Guess what? That's the name of the cookbook. Faith, family, and the feast. Y'all are the first ones to know it. We are doing a pre-launch deal that's right now, this day. You can go right through there. Hit that link that Shan's going to have you down there. KentRollins.com slash FFF. It will find you right there. I need you to pre-order this book for you and 1,400,000 of your closest neighbors. <laughs> But folks, this has got Shannon's great pictures, also her great recipes. There's more garden fresh stuff in there, more grilling stuff in there, but still the stories and the stuff y'all like. It's all about faith, it's all about family, and it's all about bringing all that together with food, and that's what life is about. I tip my hat, and I thank all our service men and women and veterans for keeping that flag flying above camp. Wherever me and Shannon are at, that flag will be flying. We never forget where y'all are at, but we also, hey, I want to start thanking you spouses and you folks that are still at home, maybe if your husband or your spouse is abroad. We keep thinking about you too. Be sure and like, share, and subscribe. Because what did Mr. Rogers always say? We need to be better neighbors and we need more good neighbors. We do. So God bless you one and all. And we hope to see you down what? The Pork Belly Trail. Y'all come on, let's get a bite. Hey, Ken, on the coffee that you put in there you prefer a Folgers or a chicory or like some kind of fruity coffee I think first of all we're going to get that regular grind I'm not going to get a coarse grind out of it because I want it to get down in there a little better than would it be if it was a really coarse ground now I really like and I hope y'all don't laugh at me now I really like Dunkin Donut coffee to do this with I've done it with Folgers I've done it with Dunkin Donut on the coffee subject, can you use like boiled down coffee for a wet marinade or do you only want a dry rub? Wet coffee I have used and put on different kinds of pork, like a pork loin, something like that, to let it sit there and marinate hours before. But the wet coffee is not going to bond to the meat as well as a dry wheel sticking to it, so it'll try to flake off and fall off a little. But as a pre-marinade and the wet coffee, if you're really not a big fond of like how coffee might taste when it's a little roasted, toasted in that thing with some smoke. Wet coffee, just a marinade two or three hours ahead of time. Put it on there. What stays on there is fine. What falls off is fine.